this with me at the end of my study week. But how did it come to this? Well, I'm glad you asked. And let's go back to how it all started. Guys, this is the sky. It's so dark, it looks like it's 5 p.m. It's actually the morning. Hello, good morning guys. Ohayo gozaimasu. Bonjour. So we're starting a new weekly study vlog today. Yay! It's literally 9 a.m. So what we're gonna start with is writing down my weekly study goals inside my language study planner. So first let me gather the study resources I am using at the moment. All right, so I need my pens, my planner, these two textbooks, my notebook for Chinese, my notebook for Russian, my glasses. All right, that's it. As always, guys, before sitting down with you this morning, I took a look at my schedule for the week and to see how busy I was with work on the one hand and just personal stuff on the other. This week I'm all right. There are some days I'm more busy. Like for example, on Saturday, I will be quite busy with coaching stuff. And I have also another lesson, like I'm giving a French lesson to a friend. So I'm gonna be pretty busy on the Saturday. And then I think today probably, so Monday is pretty much the second busiest day of my week. Other than that, on the other days, I do have coaching sessions like almost every day, actually. But, you know, just once per day. So I will be three to do my other work. So my other freelancing work uh, during the day. I think for my language study, I'm pretty much going to follow the schedule I have been following for this past, I want to say, three to four weeks. Language study in the morning, a little bit of language study like during the afternoon, at some point during the afternoon, just as a break actually from work. And then language study in the evening uh, after I take a bath. Like it's been my pattern this past few weeks. So I'm guessing that this week is going to be pretty much the same. And so that's only for active studying. Other than that, I'm doing a lot more immersion, like especially in Japanese. So anyway, let's start on my study goals. So first things first, the resources I'm going to be using. So actually, because I have it in front of me, let's start with Chinese. For Mandarin Chinese, I'm going to be using this book. I booked the Shin HSK IQ Kanarazu Derutan Speedmaster. So this one, I am done with chapter 1 and chapter 2, so I'm going to be covering chapter 3 this week. Other than that, for Chinese, there is this resource that I'm using, I'm putting on the screen right here, because it's on my iPad, actually, I have it on Kindle, and it is the NHK Chiroko Newman. And this week I'm going to be covering chapter 13. Also for Chinese, there is one specific video I'm covering these days. So it's a video on YouTube that I'm watching. Uh, you're going to see me do that during the week. So you'll, you'll understand while I'm doing it. And it is called Why You Understand Chinese But Can't Speak It. I'll explain during the week. So I also have this video to watch this week. And then for Chinese, I also have some do Chinese to read. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's do Russian. For Russian, I am simply using Duolingo. I'm just going over the course. I'm actually speed running it. Again, I'll talk to you more about it during the week. And so this is my notebook where I take my notes from uh, the speed run I'm doing on Duolingo. I am also covering uh, the first episode of the Easy Russian podcast. So again, these are my notes. Extracted vocab from the podcast trans transcript, sorry. And there is also a goal of listening immersion that I want to cover in Russian this week. And then let's go to Japanese. For Japanese at the moment, I am mostly using this resource. So this is the Shinkansen Master Kanji for N1 level. And so this is a Kanji textbook. And I am at section 7. So I'll be covering section 7 this week. I'll also be covering section 8 because these two sections are a bit shorter than the one, the previous ones. And then in Japanese I want to be watching drama, like active listening immersion, 
I want it to be part of my goals. Uh, same for listening immersion with a technical video. So again, I'll talk to you about it during the week. Then I want to be writing, either writing, so you know, expressing myself. So either writing at least 500 characters or speaking. So in any case, expression. Then I want to be reading in Japanese. And then last thing, I want to be reading at least one article, news article on Nikkei Shinbun. All right, so let's get down to writing our goals. So as you can see, these were the last two weekly study goals lists. I'm going to take one sticker here and start a new page for week three. Which one should I take? I think this one, because I'm vlogging this week. <laughs> That's a very fitting one, actually. All right, let's get down to writing this study list. Here we go guys, so to recap, for Japanese we have two chapters of the Shinkansen Master for Kanji, at least one article reading my book, uh, watching one technical video at least, and then watching drama episodes for listening immersion practice, and then expression uh, 15 minutes orally or 500 characters if it's in writing. For Chinese we have one chapter of the NHK Newman, we have one chapter of the vocab book for HSK1, uh, we have reading practice on do Chinese and then listening immersion practice. And for Russian finally we have as much as I can do on my speed run of Duolingo, still covering the first episode of the Easy Russian podcast and then listening immersion with YouTube videos. That's pretty much it and now let's get on with our week. And you know what, I'm actually gonna start with some Russian on Duolingo and look, my phone is even telling me like to open Duolingo based on time and location. It's scary, my phone knows me. <laughs> so yes, I do want to <laughs> open Duolingo and do some Russian right now. All right, so as always, setting my timer. Russian, Russian Duolingo. Let's go. <laughs> guys i'm done so it took me 25 minutes plus three minutes so a little bit less than 30 minutes i'm gonna stop the pomodoro and i'm done with speed running section four it took me two tries only and i unlock section five unit five of the section and so that's it so i was doing the unit name the colors describe where things are next time i'll do ask basic questions yay discuss things you do yay so excited to learn about that so excuse my cyrillic if you've watched my goals video for the year you'll know that this is a goal of mine this year to upgrade my cyrillic writing but nonetheless here are my notes i learned a few words today and i also learned a few grammar patterns that I didn't know yet so I'm very very excited to have learned that and that, that was a great session hi guys so I was editing for a while my new video actually I think it came out last week for you guys and now it's time for a small break I'm just gonna read my book so one of the books I'm reading right now in Japanese this is Yabai Uchi Zukan, a book about space for children and yeah I'm just gonna read that for like 10-15 minutes and then go back to my editing <laughs> Also, if you couldn't tell, the sun is finally out. I'm very, very happy about it. It's putting me in such a good mood. started this elementary level story on Do Chinese. It's called the 101 store in Chinese. Yao Ling Yao Shen Yan. Excuse me for my tones. I started a few weeks ago and I was like reading it bit by bit, like chapter by chapter, I think once per week or so. I was not very consistent with it. I was reading other things on the app, like in between. But then like 
yesterday. Um, I, when I was at the cafe yesterday on Sunday, I started reading, I think it was chapter 5. 5 or 6, so quite late in the story. I mean, in this story there are only 14 chapters. Uh, but yeah, I think it was like chapter 5. Like, it suddenly became so interesting. Like, the story became like this fantasy story. I was not expecting that at all. And I think now you guys know I like fantasy a lot, like, as a genre. And so, as soon as it became fantasy, I was like immediately hooked. And so I just read like everything, the rest of the story, so from chapter 5 to chapter 14, uh, within the span of you know, yesterday evening and today evening. So, I mean, it just shows that as soon as it starts getting interesting, I can just read for hours, like, whatever the language, <laughs> even though I'm still quite a beginner at Chinese. I know that my level improved just by reading this story. By the end of it, I was so hooked by the story that I was not focusing that hard to understand without reading the English translations. So, I'm so happy about this. And also the second thing is that, so while I read in Chinese, I always play the audio, I mean, if I can, if I have my AirPods with me. And so that's what I was doing for this whole story. And I was, uh, at first, I started it uh, at 0 0.75 speed like the audio while I was reading and it was already like a bit challenging for me. Then like by the middle of the story I was listening to the audio at you know the normal speed so one and then by the end of the story because most of the vocab and the grammar patterns were repetitive understanding was getting more and more automatic so I started thinking oh that's kind of a bit slow now I mean I read faster than the audio is playing so I went up to 1.5 speed guys so I'm hoping that this practice this little practice that I got like almost despite myself just out of interest for the story I was reading uh, will help me in the future with the listening immersion I do, especially with YouTube with Chinese subtitles. So I hope that, you know, this practice I just did will help me with that. Anyway, I am so happy. And also the story was actually really good. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for now for Chinese. And I'm gonna do some housekeeping here on my language planner. So uh, to recap what I did today, I did watch a drama episode in Japanese. I will watch a lot more this week, but I'm already ticking this off because my goal is complete. My goal is to watch one episode per week. So other than that, I also did Duolingo speedrun this morning for Russian. And uh, just now I did reading practice on do Chinese. I did read a bit in Japanese, so this is technically completed. It doesn't mean that I won't do any more Duolingo for Russian this week. Same for reading practice on do Chinese and same for Japanese. It just means that if I don't get another time this week to do these tasks, then it will be okay, like with me personally, because I would have still met my goal on this first day of the week, if that makes sense. But yeah, so anyway, so easy to complete goals that you actually want to be doing. <laughs>
if you guys saw my language study goals for 2024 video then you would know that you know one of my goals for Japanese this year is really to like fill in the gaps bridge the gaps in my knowledge my common knowledge this is related to vocab in a lot of ways I know that there is still a lot of vocab I need to acquire and so this is also tied to reading specific things this year. Last year I started reading a lot more scientific works and also essays and this year I really want to take this up a notch and like read even more uh, scientific stuff especially about things that really interest me. And there is one particular science field that I love and it is really astronomy and astrophysics. Anything related to space, it has always interested me. I pretty much started reading about this in Japanese a while back. I, I can't even place it really, uh, you know, s simple stuff, uh, mostly for children. Uh, but then now, you know, in 2024, I really want to like upgrade my level there and really be able to talk about this subject and talk about latest uh, technologies, the latest discoveries in the field in Japanese. And so to do that, I picked up uh, Yabai Utsu Dukan. So this is a children's book, very, very simplified book. Talking about space, astronomy, a little bit of astrophysics, like the actual science. I'm already like in the middle. I was reading this yesterday evening and I'm already at the middle of the book. Uh, so I'm reading this pretty fast. And this has been a great way for me to just get back into the topic. The second book I picked up is Uchu Shikumi, like more for adults. But this is still an entry level book, so it is still simplified in its explanations. It's just that, you know, since it's entry level, it doesn't go in depth like very much into the topics that it covers. So this is from the collection Chishiki Zero de Motanoshiku Yomeru. And actually, I trust this collection a lot because. Uh, even though I've only read one other book from the collection, I mean, it was absolutely great. I gave it five star last year and it was the one on psychology. When I saw this one about space, it was on my TBR, like from the day I saw it, from the day I discovered it. I've only read the first few pages and to be honest, I first want to finish the children's book before I dive into this entry level book. So the third book, this one, and this is from a researcher at the University of Tokyo and he is in this book basically answering the question of what is space like from all elements, uh, from all point of views and including all of the theories, the old ones and the recent ones on the subject. Uh, so this is still technically entry level but the level goes up a notch uh, from the Uchu no Shikumi book. So that's exactly what I was looking for and when I saw it at the bookstore I just opened the first few pages to see how it was written and it's very much written like in a very almost like spoken Japanese almost like spoken Japanese and so it's very easy to read and so when I saw that I was like okay so I'm definitely taking this one with me. So why do I have these three books and why am I reading them at the same time? It's really to help with vocab acquisition, as I said, comparing the different ways they, in these three books, explain the same theories, the same concepts or just the same words and terms. And through these different explanations, also with different levels, for each explanation, I am essentially acquiring the specific technical vocab I want to use from now on, I want to be able to use from now on much faster than if I just read the same exact vocab inside a vocab list. You guys know by now that I absolutely hate vocab lists and vocab books and even flashcards to be honest. This is for me one of the greatest ways to acquire vocab through immersion and specifically reading immersion. 
It's like 4.30 p.m. right now and I'm waiting to have a coaching session at 5 but right now I just want to check on my weekly study list where I've been studying since yesterday. Alright, so this morning I did chapter 7 of the Shinkansen Master, then I did some Duolingo Russian uh, but then it's already ticked off since yesterday. And then I also watched a technical video in Japanese, so that's ticked off. And that's pretty much it, otherwise I read my book in Japanese. Alright, that's it for today. Hi guys, it's the evening now. And originally I wanted to study a bit more, um, even if it was only immersion, but honestly I can't focus at all right now. And I think I've been this way since like earlier in the afternoon. I think I'm feeling a bit anxious and as most of the time actually, most of the time it's like this, I can't quite pinpoint what triggered my anxiety. Maybe it was like a reunion of some elements that triggered it but in any case I feel a bit anxious and I cannot focus and I just need to think I guess and just do something else. Watch things. I'm gonna play some Hogwarts Legacy now but you know usually it would be a time I would study a bit but yeah I just can't do it tonight so that's okay. So I'll see you tomorrow guys. ability to speak Russian with better clarity. Yeah. We'll be doing five different pronunciation exercises. Ничего. Ничего. Почему-то. Почему-то. So I'm done with my cursive handwriting exercise. Um, I mean, there are definitely some letters that I find more difficult than others. For example, I have to focus really hard to make sure I write this letter right. Je. You can see here that I messed up. Here it's correct. Here I messed up again. Here is correct. So I really must focus to make sure I write it correctly. Like I have a tendency to just turn off my brain for a second when I write it. And then it ends up being incorrect. I must focus really hard to make sure I write them correctly. So that's one problem. The second problem I face is that some of these letters, some of these cursive letters, especially the lowercase, are very similar to French actually. How they're written, they're written the same way. But the problem is, I really cannot re write them the same way. Another thing like that is confusing is that, for example, these two letters, so this one here, the M, and this one here, the T. Problem is that the way it's written in lowercase, the T, unfortunately, this is the way we write M in cursive in French. So basically, this, I kind of confuse it with this. My brain, I can't turn it off. <laughs> My brain thinks that when I write this, this is the letter M and I, there's pretty much nothing I can do about it for now. So by the end of the year, I really want to be able to write, let me show you, to be able to write comfortably by myself without having to look at my sheet here. And most importantly, I want to be able to understand Russian written like this. Because right now, honestly, I have to think really hard to understand what's written here, for example. What word this is. Like, I kind of decipher some of the letters. Obviously, the letter Z, for example, is very easy to recognize. But the other letters, like, I really have to think hard about it. So here you go. That was my little Russian handwriting session this morning.
this morning, you would have noticed that I actually did some Russian cursive handwriting practice, right? But if you are attentive, you would have also noticed that I actually didn't put that within my weekly study goals. So usually when that happens, when I end up studying something that I didn't put in my objectives in the first place, I just add it in to my list within the week, you know? So I do have some space left here at the end. All right, here you go. That's how I add new study goals during the week. And actually, what I might do now is do some vocab for Chinese. So I have my Shin HSK EQ Kanana's Derutan Speedo Master with me here. And so for this week, I need to cover chapter three. So that's what I'm going to do right now. chapter 3 now, so I can tick this off. Good morning guys, how are you? I am very good myself today. It is like 10.40 and I'm really happy right now because I just wrote in one sitting a full essay, like in about two hours and a half, a full essay to be published on Medium. And I'm so happy because I had this topic in mind for like the past two months and now it's just out of my system and I feel so relieved. <laughs> So it's time now to take a break. I actually really want to do some Russian right now, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's take a look at my weekly study goals list to see what I need to get done for Russian. So for Russian, I still need to study a little bit with episode one of the Easy Russian podcast. And I still need to do listening immersion with a YouTube video. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to start with watching the YouTube video right now. The videos I watch, I mostly get them from the Easy Russian YouTube channel, in fact, so it's all Easy Russian here. So I'm just gonna choose one video that seems interesting and watch this and then I'll do like maybe 10 minutes of podcast episode studying. Okay, so I've chosen my video. I think I'm gonna go with this one, Winter is Coming. How to enjoy winter, Easy Russian 81. So it's again a street interview video and honestly I'm actually interested in the topic, like I really want to know how Russian people people or just people living in Russia approach and deal with their atrociously cold winters. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch that now. Привет, дорогие друзья, и добро пожаловать в новый выпуск Easy Russian. So I'm done with this video. It was amazing. I'm so glad I chose this one. It was again such an interesting topic. So let me show you my vocab list here. So basically I extracted only the words that I was interested in and I divided them by words related to the topic of winter until here. Okay. So these words here. And then the second part of my list is just words that I wish I would know from now on. So just, you know, other words, words that I find useful to know at my level. And yeah, really, this was such a wholesome video again. I recommend this channel so much. I love the Easy Languages contents. All right, so it's now 11.24 and I'm gonna start making lunch. <laughs> It's a bit later right now and I, after doing Duolingo, some Russian on Duolingo just to get back to the floor, I'm going to do a small session on the Easy Russian podcast, the first episode. I'm at 25 minutes into the podcast and it's actually 35 minutes long. So I just have 10 minutes left. So let me listen to it now. Thank you. 
finished the task that I was not very happy to do. It was a very annoying sort of task. I had been pushing it back all week. I needed to do it this week anyway. But then once I was done, I was so tired. So I think that for today, I'm just going to take it easy for the rest of the day. Right now it's like 3 p.m. I'm gaming a bit and so at the same time I'm reading my book in Japanese. I'm reading my Yabai Uchizukan book. I'm on page 71. I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy these days and because I have the Switch version actually there is a lot of loading time. Like in any place I enter, like for example if I go into a cave, there will be a charging time, like a loading time. So it takes ages <laughs> to transport myself to places. So basically whenever I have a big waiting time, I just take my book. So it's always there like in front of me on the table. <laughs> so I'm literally like playing and reading at the same time. It's a bit weird, but it works well, especially with a book like this, because I can read a one single double page, which is about one theme in like two minutes. So it's absolutely great because maybe the charging time is going to be for like one minute, enough for me to at least read one of the pages and then just take the time to read the second page and then just go back to my game. It's working great. I'm having a great time. <laughs> it's a great break time for me. to look at my phone anymore when I actively study, especially with textbooks. There's something about textbooks that really makes me focus and I really do not look at my phone. You know, I do look at my phone to look up the vocab, but I really only open this app. But the big issue is that when I do listening immersion, I tend to really look at my phone a lot and that's an issue. I don't focus on what I'm listening to. So I was thinking that actually I could just remedy this issue quite easily. <laughs> by watching the videos with my VR headset. Because if I have my VR headset on, then there is no chance I can look at my phone. I would need to take off <laughs> the VR headset. You know, it's much more difficult. So I think I'm gonna do that now. I'm just going to continue watching one of the videos in Chinese I was watching earlier. So you're gonna see me look very stupid. I know I look stupid because I've seen pictures of myself wearing the headset. So I think everyone looks stupid with that stuff on. Probably just like a ski outfit. <laughs> Language learning in 2024. <laughs> Here we go. Do I have Mark on? I feel like I do. I was watching my video for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was so fun. And I didn't look at my phone. Not once. <laughs> so there you go, guys. <laughs> New tip in 2024 for language learning, for language immersion. You actually have to use a VR headset. That's my number one tip. No, I'm joking. It's not a sustainable way to go. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Oyasuminasai. Good morning guys! Taking you for my closet today. This morning I am meeting up with a friend of a friend's daughter. She's Japanese. I meet with her like every few weeks because she's a high school student and she's done one year of high school in France. So she speaks French actually quite well. But since she came back to Japan, she's not speaking French a lot anymore. And she doesn't want to lose her French. So we just talk for like an hour every few weeks so that she doesn't lose it. And so yeah, that's where I'm heading to this morning. And I'll probably read on the train. I hesitated between these two books on which one I would take with me, but I think I'm gonna take Yaba Yuchizukan because I'm almost done with this. Like, I'm at more than the middle part and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident I can finish this fast. So I'm gonna prioritize this and yeah, let's go.
It's almost 4 p.m. It's time for me to take a break before I have my coaching session this afternoon. I was editing for like, I think two hours at least. <laughs> I really need a break. I don't have much left on my weekly study goals list, actually. What I do have left for Chinese is covering this chapter, chapter 13 from the NHK New Mom. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to leave the Shinkansen Master for Japanese and the expression practice for either tonight or tomorrow. But yeah, so right now let's do some Chinese. So after studying with my textbook earlier, I was really in the mood after my bath this evening to listen to Chinese. I was watching this video that I started last week, really watching it like all in one go, 15 minute long video, to see how much I would grasp. I didn't look at my phone once, feel like I could understand like so much just out of interest, if that makes sense. Like I could understand from this video way much than my current level in Chinese would allow me. The theme really interests me, topics about language learning that interest me a lot. Thanks to this, I think once again, just by this one little session of 15 minutes, I think my Chinese improved just a little bit, you know? Very, very successful and I cannot wait to do some more language learning tomorrow on Sunday. So guys, small update on my study list. As you can see, I have completed almost everything for this week that I wanted to do. And actually I've done some bonus studying as well, some bonus immersion. But then for today, what I have left is covering chapter 8 of the Shinkansen Master for Kanji and writing 500 characters for expression. Um, I don't think I will be doing the 15 minutes oral expression today, so instead I will be writing. And I will do both of these things at the cafe, which I'm going to right now. <laughs> so let's go. So it's already 3 p.m., a little bit before 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and I'm about to start my vocab review session. So first if we take a look at my goals list, we'll see that this is now done, and this is also completed. So I completed 100% of my goals for this week. Please remember that this does not always happen. <laughs> In fact, it is quite rare, but I'm getting better. I'm making it a point this year to really make sure my goals are set in accordance with what I can actually realistically do during the week. So I guess that this week uh, did pretty well. 
since I've met all of my goals, the only thing that is left for me to do today is a vocab review, so a full review of all the vocab I have encountered, studied, extracted this week in all of my languages. So here I have created a specific task on my focus app. This tag is for Japanese vocab, this tag is for Chinese vocab as you can see, and this tag is for Russian vocab. So now I'm just gonna have a 25 minute session reviewing all of my vocab. I have everything ready, my Japanese immersion notes notebook, my Russian notebook and my Chinese notebook and all the necessary <laughs> tombo pens I need to highlight my vocab. All right, let's go. it's on that note that we'll conclude today's weekly vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, that it gave you some ideas for your own language learning. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye! Matani.